Marketing Podcast is brought to you by Esther of IPA Group, bringing premier online promotion to your business. And Melanie of Stump Social Media Training, who empowers business owners to manage social media and marketing for themselves. And welcome back to another episode of the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. Today we're talking about content pillars. What are they and why do we need them? But first, here's a quick message from our sponsor. Get ready to be a social media superstar with Feed Alpha. Their friendly AI and super simple tools make it a breeze to see what your followers are into. That means you can post the cool stuff they love right when they're most likely to see it. Check out feedalpha.com to find out more and take your social media to the next level. Some people refer to them as either four or five content pillars. Um, and there seems to be a rule of thumb that you should have over one and maybe not more than five. Okay. Sounds sounds promising. Okay. So far that, um, you know, there's not too many mm. that we need to discuss and talk about. So it won't be a long podcast episode. We're not going to go on for hours. <laughs> I think if we ever did, our audience would switch off after 20 minutes anyway. So social media content pillars are themes that a brand should look at and focus on to communicate to your audience. Um, and one of the the obvious ones is the promotional. Um, but I also see that as a credibility pillar as well. Okay, so... When I think of pillars, I sort of see them all the same height. Is that mm. what we're going for here? We're putting well, the same amount of effort into each pillar? Yeah. The overall strategy should balance on top of all of the pillars. Oh, yeah, that's that sounds reasonable. So promotional pillar would be your buy now, 20% discount, things like that. Yeah. Hmm. But it okay. could also be your credibility. Your um, user generated content it could be your um, testimonials for instance okay cool so another pillar then would be educational why do the people need to buy what you're selling why do they need this in their life what pain point is it um solving what um benefit is there to them if they buy it yeah, so educating them on what the product is or service is, how they use it, why they need it, etc. And I would also see this as the conversational pillar. So you're doing a two-way conversation with your audience and you're explaining to them <clears throat> in a language that they understand how your product responds to their pay point. Hmm. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Um <laughs> So one that our content usually fits into with the podcast is entertainment. So entertainment of, you know, well, does what it says in the tin. It's entertaining. It's um, educational, engaging, all in one. Yeah, I mean, we, we call ourselves edutain, don't we? Yeah. So we yeah. try to incorporate so, a bit of both. So this is the fun side of your business. This is the what goes wrong or what goes right and this behind the scenes and the showing people how to use, especially if it's a product, showing them how to use it. And uh, it's your how-to videos. It's your um, people having fun. And I would see this as your connection. So this is where people are meeting you on a personal level. I think, um, mm -hmm. and you're you're making yourself a bit more relatable, I suppose, at this stage. So people are seeing who you are, uh, sort of behind the scenes, and I think this would also be the time that you're actually meeting people and doing the like selfie photos and um, group photos and yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. I would see would be that part of the pillar. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another pillar then that some people like to include is community, mm. which is what social media is all about. It's the social aspect of it. It's building your community, building your followers, building those moments between 
um, everyone. You know, it's it's the sharing, asking a question and getting other people to answer those questions, especially in, you know, maybe in, in our line of work where people have always got questions about social media, digital marketing, web design, ads, et cetera, et cetera. It's throwing questions out there and getting the community to help uh, answer mm. the questions. I, th- I think you can interpret in different ways, though, Esther, because it's not just you know q is q and a's and that sort of thing in my head it's building the community um so it's talking about other stuff that matters to them that may not necessarily be you um you know we've talked about it before serve share and sell so this is Mm -hmm. where i do the serving and the the sharing and sharing other people's related content that matters to um, our audience so it doesn't matter what niche we are we've all got people who buy other products or services um, connected some way to our niche yeah, yeah. so website designers um, graphic designers and social media managers work together on a regular basis so I would share that related content um, to mm-hmm. aid and build my community yeah yeah because at the end of the day of what you want with your pillars is to help people and for them to remember you and them to come back to you and buy from you. Yeah. So using content pillars is a way to build that trust and build that. Well, with the final, with the fifth content pillar would be engagement. So building that engagement, building that back and forth um, conversation, building that, um, where they want to share your content because they know and trust you now to know that you're, what you're saying is correct or that what you're selling is of good quality. So they want to share it. They want to sp- help spread the word. Hmm. So that would be in the engagement part. And you can ask for that engagement by saying, you know, share this with someone that you know that could benefit from this or it could just be organic and people do it uh, off their own bat. And I think the the final um, pillar for me would, would be the conversion pillar. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the ones I've been outlining here, in case um, I'm sure a couple of people have copped, um, these are the five C's that were promoted by Katya.com, um, which we spoke about actually at an event last year. And they're they're just a suggestion. You know, we we found these different ways of talking about content pillars. um, And it just depends on what works for you. But if you can understand that there are different ways that this information can be interpreted and also delivered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can, and I, I love the way you've described that earlier on, Esther, where you were saying, are they the same height, you know, and I agree. I think they should build upon being like a, a block of your strategy. And yeah. if you do if you do it right, <laughs> um, then you'll have a firm base to build and and thrive with your yeah. marketing. And something that you mentioned there, building on it, it's mm. not an overnight thing. It's not yeah. a let's just sit down for five minutes, brainstorm what these are and then run with them. You have to analyze and see what's working as well, Mm. because you might go for five pillars when you really only need four or maybe even three, or you might start with three and then see that you need to build up more. more. So you need to be constantly um, reviewing what's working in those content pillars. And as Kerry said in a recent podcast, sprinkle a little smattering of other things in there. So Kerry was on talking about awareness days. Sprinkle those in as well. You don't have to just stick with the content pillars because you need some cement to keep those pillars going. Mm. And if you've got the, this sort of mental image in your head of these pillars, then hopefully it should help you think of different ways to reach your audience with more interesting and 
persuasive content, be it through infographics, through polls, through Q&As, maybe going live. Um, and if you take into account that these five or up to five pillars um, may be relevant for your customers, then it will give you different ways to deliver um, content that matters to them. Because ultimately, we tend to broadcast, don't we? And I do it as well. And I kind of have to slap myself every now and then to, to stop doing it. Um, but we all do it. We all broadcast on our social channels. And we've got to stop doing that. We've got to be more social. The whole point of it is to be social. And th- and that's why all the algorithms are being relooked at and updated on a semi-regular basis, because we are using it all inappropriately. What mm-hmm. they want us to do is if if we want to broadcast if we want to use it as a media platform they want us to pay for it yeah and that's fair enough because that at the end of the day that's their business model as well so Mm. what you need to remember when you're sitting down to start your content pillars is that they need to be aligned with your business goals Mm. as well they need to be in line with what you're aiming to do and not something that will end up with something completely off I was going to say skewift that's probably a very Irish word (laughs) but what are you trying to achieve with your social media presence what type of content will your target audience find valuable getting Mm -hmm. back to that target audience each and every time are you aiming to be edutaining or are you going to separate the edu? entertainment and the education into different um pillars do you want to drive traffic to your website or do you want to keep them on your social media answer to that one guys is website okay just in case you were wondering (laughs) but revisit your content pillars every month especially at the start to make sure that they're still aligned with your overall vision because you your pillar can go wonky if it's not going um the way that it's supposed to go towards your goal and it's okay if they change that is fine there's nothing wrong with that i think they must change otherwise you can get quite stagnant yeah yeah and your brand's constantly changing and you as a business owner and as a face of a business are constantly changing as well your products your services they all may change so your pillars need to change and modify with that too i'm glad you said that because i am my product And I am changing. I'm getting older. (laughs) And that's all valid. I mean, we had Neve Hogan talk to us ages ago now about her whole skincare and how it has evolved as she has aged and her skin has aged into different products as well. And that's Mm. totally valuable. And and I suppose as we progress and our brand gets more recognition we also have to hit different markers as well so you reach a point where you've got a good presence maybe on one platform and maybe it's time to embrace a new one um i know some people uh really hate doing email marketing but you know after a few years of getting a good online presence they start considering the old email um, area and I tell you what content pillars do you a power of good in your email marketing even if you don't feel it in your socials and um, because you know because you your audience already knows who you are and what you do exactly exactly and on that point I just wouldn't desert one platform for another if you're going to add in another platform like email marketing add it in don't substitute the email marketing for what you've already been doing no No, i wouldn't wouldn't recommend doing that and unless it was maybe i mean we've heard of um other businesses haven't we esther that have decided okay we're going to throw everything into instagram for a while because it seems to be lifting off for us Mm -hmm. Um, I've had one lady who I trained um, a couple of years ago now who was doing really, really well on Facebook and Instagram, but didn't know about Google Business Profile. And I showed her Google Business Profile and honestly, she just left it off. Um, and she she kept her presence on Facebook and Instagram, so she didn't stop posting or anything. Um, but she threw her all into Google Business Profile. and Boy, did that make a difference. Yeah. 
Yeah, adding things in as you go. I don't you don't need to do them all from the very start, yeah. but add them in as you feel comfortable. And even when you don't, step outside your comfort zone and add a few more things in. I, I've been doing reels. If you've been looking at our Instagram, <laughs> I, I I don't do video. <laughs> yeah, but what so. difference it's made? Have you seen our, our dashboard, our professional dashboard, and our insights and analytics, Esther? It's made such a difference. Yeah, I've, I've, they love me. What can I say? Yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for today, guys. We'll be back next week before Melanie drags me into doing something else on video. We'll be back next week for another episode of the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. Do you know, I don't think it's just you, you know. I think it's just, <laughs> just video. No, I think they're not used to seeing me. They're used, more used to seeing you, but definitely I'm the novelty factor. <laughs> You're the novelty <laughs> You've been called a lot of things before, but that's new. <laughs>